Oh, riggedy ratty. You guys want to know something funny? Sometimes the emulator I'm using decides it doesn't want to be recorded anymore, then I have to start all over. Anyway, I think this is probably here to move coal from place to place. It probably comes from over there. And then the belt carries it down the tunnel and out here. So if the conveyor belt was moving, yeah, coal would almost certainly come out here. Yeah, son. Yeah. The tunnel goes all the way across the ship. Well, what's this? It's a square hole? Nothing in here. That's a rectangle, you asshole. Ah, look at the back wall there. I can see three mall slots. Three mall slots, yes. There you can purchase many items and various under goods. Terminals for some sort of connector, perhaps? I mean, you think we're supposed to plug something in here? Perhaps. Sand of the squares are my regular rectangles. A golden gear. Doesn't look like it's always golden like this. Well then, I imagine I was prepared especially for this game. Looks like there's a door over here in this tunnel. The belt over there must deliver the coal, which is then picked up and thrown into this door. The door appears to be old and shut, however. Well, that blows dicks. A huge bronze gear. This has to be important. Small door in the side of this tunnel. It's welded shut and won't open. What about this? A bunch of wooden boxes over here by the wall. I already looked through those. There's nothing there. Sweet. Nope. Hey, this looks important. There's a pair of wooden boxes here. There's nothing in them. Look, Ace. Some kind of snowman secret meeting. Those are just bags full of sand. Use them as counterweight when you're lifting something with a bully system. Man, you're too serious. It's a silver gear. You think it's made of pure silver? No way. Silver's way too soft to use for a gear. It's gotta be steel or iron gear that's been coated with silver. Ugh. Shouldn't have called it a silver gear then. Shouldn't have got your hopes up. Are you thinking you'd haul this thing back? Nah, but I think Seven can probably carry it, don't you? It's awfully cheeky. Conveyor belt runs into a sort of arch tunnel. Hmm. What's this? What is this? Given its place, mate, this must sound like the door to the left. There's a weird indentation on top of this thing. I think that means you have to insert something in here. Uh, maybe you should try your balls. It's a thick iron door blocking our way. I think this is. Yep. Looks like the exit. Looks like this door slides up into the ceiling. Oh man, Junpei, I can't believe I missed something so important. What's so important? Look at those stairs. Look at them carefully. The gap. The height. That angle. It's perfect. Perfect. Perfect for what? Whatever, just bring Clover here, right now. Tell her she needs to walk up and down these stairs. Huh? Clover's not here. What the hell is he talking about? Yeah, I don't get it either. Oh, wait. What the fuck? That's fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up. Fuck you. Three sliders on the left are down, but this one is up. There are numbers of lines engraved on these. I suspect we are meant to do something other specific with them. Junpei, why don't you move that slider down? Well, there's no harm in trying, I suppose. Nothing. Hmm. Nothing happened. Maybe it needs to be prepared somehow. Saying if we did something somewhere else, it'd respond somehow? Yeah, I suppose that's one way of putting it. No way but forward, eh? One of the doors on the furnace. There's an A on it. There's a circular wheel in the center of the door. Alright, let's give that sucker a twist. Well, it's noisy, but it opens. And it's totally pitch black in there. Awesome. Should uh, go in here. Alright, let's go. This looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? It must be on the other side, yes? Which should put us directly above the conveyor belt. At any rate, we should keep moving. There's a great deal we've yet to investigate. I was expecting to discover. Alright. Okay. There's a wooden box hanging beneath the catwalk. Can I investigate it? it? Looks like there's something in that box. Double check it. What the fuck you doing, asshole? 
Can I cut it? Looks like a hand operated winch. But it doesn't look like there's any way to uh, operate it. That means the wheel isn't attached. Well, fuck my ass. Stamp pile of boxes blocking my way. Ooh, sea door. Whole bunch of boxes in my way. Can't get through. That's crying shame. Well, uh, anyway, it looks like that's the pipe. Looks like the bottom connects to the conveyor belt housing. And then the coal must come out of this pipe and onto the conveyor belt. In other words, there must be a great deal of coal in that pipe. Number of boxes on the catwalk. I don't think we can go over there. How about here? Stairs back down should be on the other side of these boxes. I have excellent memory. Use that to draw a map inside your head. That way, you won't get lost. That will get irritated. Hey! Alright, let's give this a whirl. What? That's weird. I don't feel any resistance. Gah! Ah, shit. Yep. It's a wheel that seems to be part of the winch. There's some pages on the back. Some pegs on the back look like they're going to holes on the winch. Well. Good job, genius. You broke it. I didn't break it. It broke all by itself. You dick cheese burger. Hand operated winch. Uh, there's no wheel to turn. Oh yeah. I've got the wheel I pulled off the other winch, don't I? Let's see if it fits. Sweet, it's a perfect fit, like they were made for each other. Not shaky at all. Good. Should be able to turn this now. Good work, Junpei. Should be able to haul up the wooden box now. See? The wooden box? It's under the catwalk. Can you see it? It's hanging from the rope on the winch, isn't it? Yes! How many sentences can you write about this fucking box? Just grab it. Looks like there's some sort of device in the box. I'm not sure what it is. At any rate, you might as well turn that wheel now. I'm counting on you. Yep. Turning the wheel. Oh boy. Pappy loves when I turn these wheels. What happened? The wheel only turns to the left. Only turns to the left? That means we can't reel up that rope. Yeah. We can only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that will be a problem. We will simply need to go downstairs after letting the wooden box down. I'll be counting on you, Dreamtay. Sure thing. No sweat. Who cares? Jeez. Oh, great. Story. I believe the box has reached the floor. Yeah. He stuck his head out over the side of the catwalk and looked down. The box that had only recently hung just below the catwalk now sat on the floor. It had come to rest near the end of the tunnel that covered the conveyor belt, near where June had collapsed. Junpei could see her, still leaning against the wall as if she barely had the strength to sit up. Even from so far away, it was not difficult to see that she had not improved. He almost thought he could see heat rising from her body. She doesn't seem to be improving. Ace's expression was inscrutable, but he'd said what they had all been thinking. Well, of course not. She's just not going to get better right away, you know? It'll take time. He tried desperately to convince himself that, that what he'd said was true. What could be causing this, I wonder? Illness, perhaps? Nah, it's got to be exhaustion. Sam's response was confident and certain. She gets dropped into some weird-ass ship, forced to play some messed-up game. Think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't freaking out just like her, you know? So you're saying we're abnormal? Yeah. We're just running around this room solving all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. How the hell could you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. Santa snorted in disgust. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? Uh, or a guinea pig? You mean we're being used for some... Oh. My. Ah, is that what you're saying? Don't know. But it does seem like a possibility, you know? With that, he turned and walked away from the winch. Junpei and Ace followed him. You know, speaking of experiments, Santa suddenly stopped. There was this experiment some scientists did with rats. First, they took a square sheath-shaped tank and filled it with enough water that the rats could drown. The tank had two exits, A and B. Exit A is pitch black, so dark even a rat can't see anything. Exit B, however, is electrified, which means the rat can't leave through it. So what would a rat do if it was put in this situation? Which exit would the rat choose? 
There was a moment of silence after Santa posed a question, and then Ace responded. B, of course. The rat has no way of knowing that the exit B is electrified. Exactly. The rat goes into exit B. Of course, just like I said, it's electrified, which means the rat can't get out that way. So after a lot of trial and error, the rat finally finds exit A. Hmm. Can't say it's very interesting or relevant. Simply the story of a laboratory experiment. You're right, it isn't very interesting. Yet. Hmm? These scientists repeated this experiment over and over, using hundreds of different rats over several generations. This produced some surprising results. With each generation of rats, they took less time to find the correct exit. Eventually, a rat was put in the tank who instantly chose exit A without even attempting to go to exit B. But even that wasn't the most impressive thing. The same experiment was conducted in another laboratory far from the original one with the same results. No, second thought, the results were really the same. The rats in the second experiment began the trials with significantly faster times than the first rats in the initial experiment. These rats were not related to the rats used in the first experiment and had never even come in contact with them, and yet, they all easily found their way to exit A as though they already knew. What did it mean? Are you suggesting something like telepathy? They were passing information to one another through some undetectable medium? Ace looked skeptical. Santa snorted at him. How the hell would I know? I'm not any kind of scientist. I don't know what made him do that. But I do know that story is true. And if you got another explanation, I'd sure love to hear it. Uh, I do. Statistical variance. Regression towards the mean. Come on, let's get going. There's still a lot of it here we haven't checked out. I mean, we gotta get the hell out of here before June passes out. Without waiting for a response, he turned around and started walking. Junpei, however, wasn't quite ready to leave the topic alone. Hey, wait. There's something I want to ask you. Santa stopped and turned around. Why did they use that tank for the experiment? Huh? Well, I mean, seems like you could conduct the same experiment without the water. They could have just used a dry box, you know? If they needed to motivate the rest to the escape, they could have, I don't know, put some bait by exit B or something. I mean... Do they have to make it so the rats can drown? Santa gave a grim bark of a laugh. You know the word emergency comes from the same root as, same root as the word emerge? You ever think about that? Well, an emergency is something urgent, often something dangerous. And to emerge means to sort of come out or appear or rise out of something else. So it's going to emerge in an emergency? Inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah. Think about it. When the chips are down, either you crack or your mind focuses and pulls up what you need. So in an emergency, your real potential emerges? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's why the rats had to drown. They had to be in danger. There had to be an emergency for inspiration to emerge. Uh, Junpei suddenly felt cold. In the back of his head was aching and his stomach felt strange. Well. <sighs> Yep. Was it here? What's this away? Another golden gear? Another bronze gear? And another silver gear. Or the same silver gear. Number of these little windows along the inside of this thing. I think you're supposed to put coal through these, but they're welded shut. I don't think we can get these open. What's this? Control panel for. Ah, gotcha. Right. Maybe this hole is where the control panel goes? There's only one way to find out. In you go! Dude, you did it! Everything looks alright. Okay, but what do we do now? Why don't you press the button next to it? The orange one? Yeah. Alright, I'll do that. Pushing! Boop. Sweet, all sorts of lights are lighting up on this thing. And, oh, yes, I think I just heard something turn on. Oh? What's that? What's happened? Junpei, look, the conveyor belt's moving. The conveyor belt? Well, I guess it's done moving now. 
There's still a bunch of coal in the belt, though. Looks like a bunch of it got dumped off at the end of the belt into that wooden box where we found the control panel. Coal. Coal, huh? Since the belt started moving, it's transported quite a bit of coal. It all drops off to the left end of the belt, right into the wooden box. Sweet. Just what I always wanted. Now it can ruin kids' Christmases. No oh, shit, was this what I needed that whole time? So hold up, let us put coal into the furnace. Maybe if we can get some coal in there and set it on fire. Okay, let's do it. Alright, that's the last of it. No coal left in the wooden box. And nothing. Great. I guess I should have expected that. Why would just throwing coal into a cold furnace do anything? Oh well, a man can dream. Junpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to soak the furnace with coal, which will heat the water stored up in there and make steam, which will then drive something else. Am I correct? In other words, you want to generate enough pressure with steam to power the turbine? And drive the steam engine, right? Yeah, I guess that's the uh, gist of it. Hmm. Well, in that case, this isn't enough coal. This furnace is enormous, so we're going to need a whole hell of a lot more coal than this. Very well then, if the three of us work together, then we should manage to fill it much faster. Uh, I want to help too. Man, I totally didn't even see her walk up. Uh, are you feeling up to that? Yes. Yeah, right. You look like you're one stiff breeze away from falling over, June. I think you'd better rest some more, alright? But I... No arguing. You need your rest, so you just stay there. We'll handle this. Eh. Mm hmm? Okay. I understand. Alright. Time for some manly work. Let's get this coal into those furnaces. Love those sound effects. Man, this is a lot of work. Alright, I think this should be sufficient. Alright now, we just gotta light it. Junpei, hand me your matches. What makes you think I have matches? I see. Then how are we gonna light it? Perhaps there's a device nearby that allows us to remotely ignite the coal. Let's take a look, shall we? Some sort of ignition device, huh? There we go. Is this? I think it might be. Probably is. I think this is how we might ignite the furnace. That means that if we move the thing down... Alright, let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Junpei, Ace, look at this. There's big gears turning under the boiler here. Huh? Welp. The gears. M metal gear. They're spinning. What the hell are you guys waiting for? Let's start looking. Go on this. The gold disc has a number of lines engraved on it. They make out three colors here. Red, blue, and black. Hmm, I wonder what they mean. There we go. The bronze disc has a bunch of lines in three different colors. Red, blue, and black. Embedding the silver one does as well. The silver disc has a bunch of lines on it, but the red ones really stand out, right? Red ones, huh? What about the other side? Is it the same one? Man, nah, whatever. Angles are confusing. Looks like this thing unlocks the door. There's a depression here that looks like it's the outline of three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe. Maybe for what those three desks we found in this thing. Discs, not dicks. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's stick them in. Oh. Alright, three guys. We each have three discs. We're gonna stick them in. Yeah, maybe. Huh, that's odd. Nothing's happening. Maybe you're, I don't know, putting them in the wrong places? Perhaps you have them facing the wrong directions? I actually should rotate the disc to make some of the lines connect to one another. Hmm. No harm in trying. I get it. When the disc is touched, it will rotate a certain amount. 
when the white arrow is touched and discs are switched. Please note that when the discs are switched, the angles for the discs are reset. Good to know. lines on these discs. I think maybe I can make a star polygon with these. And the dead. I'm going to congratulate myself on my genius because I'm pretty sure that was the last puzzle. Yes, the door's open. Given the circumstances, Junpei's happiness was certainly understandable. He seemed to share in his excitement. All right, Junpei. Why don't you go get June now? Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Santa snorted. Why do we need to do that? Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. We can just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Shall all three of us go and collect June then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it. He still seemed irritated by something, however, and sat down on the stairs petulantly. So, you are only interested in being contrary? And he sighed with the air of long-suffering parents. Alright, I'll go get June. I'll be right back. He gave a quick nod to Ace and Santa and dashed off down the stairs. Before long, he was back on the first floor next to the conveyor belt and June. As he drew closer, she stood up slowly. Are you okay? He did his best to sound calm and nonchalant, but there was no hiding the genuine concern in his voice. Yes, I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. June blushed. He wasn't sure if she was embarrassed or still feverish. Just to make sure, he reached out and put his hand against her forehead. Good. You're feeling a lot better. She was feeling far less warm than she had earlier, but she still wasn't down to what seemed normal to him. Are you sure you're alright? He had to be sure. June gave him a look. Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops. I mean, warrior. <laughs> June giggled. He wasn't sure if she just made a joke or not, but seeing her smile again made June pay feel ease. At ease. Feel easy, you never know. Could be both. If she was well enough to smile and laugh, and she really was feeling much better. He gave her a friendly poke on the forehead. Let's go. Go where? Wait. Do people friendly poke each other? For it. Right. Oh, right, I didn't tell you. We got the exit open, so... Great! Let's go! June clasped her hands and nodded urgently. As they walked back toward the exit, Junpei noticed Santa sitting on the stairs. He was, however, holding something in his right hand and staring out with a strange expression. Junpei and June slowed down and finally stopped in front of him. What are you looking at? Santa answered without looking up, his voice quiet. It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you got a sister? Santa simply nodded. Yeah. Kid was cute as a button. June cocked her head, confused. She was only about an inch tall then? Santa glared at her. Ah, uh, sorry. I guess an inch is a little large for a button. Probably more like a half inch. <sighs> Santa didn't smile or laugh. He simply turned back to his picture and spoke. I was her Santa Claus. This sudden revelation took Junpei by surprise. He had no idea what Santa meant. He glanced at June, who shook her head. She didn't know either. We didn't have parents. They bought it in an accident when we were still kids. So I had to be like her dad. And that meant that I bought her Christmas presents every year. Christmas Eve, I'd leave the present next to her pillow. And the next morning, she'd come running into my room with this big smile. Look, look! Santa left me a present. Santa got me that doll I really wanted. I'm so glad that he got the letter I wrote. I was the one who told her to write those letters. I'd say, write down something you want and mail it to Santa. 
The address I gave her was somewhere in Northern Europe that did, doesn't exist. Anyway, she'd write the letter and stamp it and send it out. And then a few days later, it'd show up back on her mailbox marked address unknown. I'd open the letters before she figured out they'd been sent back. Once I had the letter, I'd go around to a couple stores with some money I'd saved up over the year and buy her the stuff she'd asked for. It took a lot of saving, but I managed to buy her presents every year. Junpei was silent. He could think of nothing to say. June looked down, uncomfortable. The wall next to him suddenly groaned. Either he hadn't heard the sound or didn't care. Santa kept talking. One year, her letter was different. She didn't write a list of toys she wanted or anything like that. Instead, it said, I don't want any presents this year. Instead, I want you to make my wish come true. My wish is that we'll be happy like this for a really, really long time. But I couldn't make that wish come true. Some Santa I am. Santa looked sad. Junpei had never seen him look sad before, in the whole six hours he's known him. He wasn't sure he liked it. Junpei decided it was probably best not to ask Santa any more questions. But... What happened? June glanced up at Santa quickly as she spoke. He answered, but only with an effort. She died. She was killed. Nine years ago. She would be the one who died in the experiment. Mm -hmm. There was nothing Junpei could say. His heart felt like a great lump of lead. June bit her lip and looked away. Her face was pale. Alright, let's go. Santa stood up suddenly, his downcast demeanor gone. He shoved the picture back in his pocket and headed back up the stairs, taking them two at a time. Junpei and June looked at one another. There was nothing they could think of to say. Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving. Come on. Santa's voice echoed across the room from above them. They nodded and followed him quickly to the stairs. Ace was waiting for them at the top. He was leaning against the handrail. He looked very tired. The door had shut, but it wasn't cause for concern. Junpei quickly solved the disc puzzle a second time, and the door opened once again. And in single file, they walked through. After walking for nearly 15 feet, they found themselves in front of a metal door. It opened easily enough, and they passed through it as well. A new room stretched out before them. Is this a warehouse? No, I believe this is the cargo room. This must be where they store all of this vessel's freight. There are wooden crates everywhere. I wonder how old they are. Junpei, Ace, and June had stopped unconsciously, pausing to take in their new surroundings. Santa's voice broke through their momentary trance. Well, we probably had to start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going. Out of one frying pan and into another fire. We'll finish this one up tomorrow. Bye!